Women Matters, the meeting at the end of February 2024. So, as always, we start with a check-in. I'm glad you are here. Six of us today. That's nice. Monia, you were the first. Would you like to start and then give over to the next person? Okay. As we already talked beforehand, uh, it's dark outside now in Vienna already still. So summertime takes another month almost, more than a month. And uh, I shared my experience of how to crack an egg. And I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Because for seven decades, I cracked the egg much too complicated. You just drop it into the pan and then you take out the shells. And there you have your fried egg. So it's very simple. Try it. It works. I tried it just before. Okay. After these important news, I pass on to uh, Christine. Good morning. That's funny. <laughs> um, I'm Christine. I'm in Carlsbad, California, Southern California. Uh, I missed last session, so I hope you all uh, carried on and had a good time. Um, had a nice visit with my siblings in Florida. Uh, we all get along really well. Uh, so that's that's really nice. We had a pleasant time. Looked at turtles that were being rescued. They have a marine life rescue that was fun went to visit my mm. nephew um walked in some state parks took some hikes and uh yeah generally had a really really nice time um went and saw a friend of mine from high school who lives up in savannah georgia so i kind of take the opportunity to also tag on a few extra days to see her so that was also very nice so um not, not too much going on, working on uh, my daughter's wedding in about a year from now. So that's been fun and I'm enjoying that, having a good time. So I will pass on. It's really, I'm really happy to see Victoria, by the way. Very pleased to see you back. So if you are there, Victoria, please uh, say hello. Check in. Hi, thank you, Christine. Uh, no, I had a... a, a um cold tea crisis. Um, <laughs> I'll try the cracking of the eggs later on. Um, I thought I had hot tea, but I had forgotten to heat it up. So I had to attend to it. Actually, it's being attended to. Um, that's very long winded. Um, I'm glad to be here too. And um, let's see, I don't really have any news, um, except the one thing I'd be curious about since we're all women is I I'm having a lot of really, really, really awful health symptoms, which I've been having now for months. Um, part of the reason I, you haven't seen me for a long time. Um, and, uh, my therapist is convinced that, uh, that they have to do with being female, that that's like, um, a perfect storm in my case of, of, um, like, um, sorry, <laughs> brain fog. It's one of them. Um, like hormonal things and, uh, with, with menopause, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my age and other things that seem to be that women tend to get more than men, like, like fibromyalgia, which mm -hmm. is so severe now that sometimes I can't, um, I literally like feel like my whole body's on fire and I can't move. It's just awful. Um, anyway, I don't want to bring, I, I didn't bring it up last time that we met because I, it's just too depressing, but, but I'm, I it just suddenly occurred to me this morning because I, I was in bed for 12 hours last night and, um, and didn't really sleep because I, it was like my whole, everything, every nerve and fiber was on fire and just excruciating, I mean, excruciating. I've had, and I've had some pretty excruciating health things, but this was worse than any of them. So suddenly this morning, I thought, I'm just going to bring that up and then just kind of let you all sit with it. And then maybe if, if any of you have some things you've tried and tested, or you have friends or, or whatever, just through the, it's kind of a grassroots thing. Cause I have a huge battery of doctors. I'm not, I'm not at lack of medical, <laughs> medical <laughs> assistance. 
Um, the only the only women among them feel like I should just like go down to Mexico and squander my entire um, fortune, such as it is on all kinds of alternative things, which you can't get here in the United States. So I'm kind mm -hmm. of in a one of those. Um, I thought of you, Heidi, when she said that. I thought, that sounds just like Heidi with all these, like you're up on all these really esoteric things. Um, so so anyway, I won't say any further. I don't want to spend the whole check in, but um, but I'd appreciate any and we don't have to spend the time here either. If you want to send me an email with something you've thought of or know about, I'd appreciate it. Um, and if not, just please keep me in your prayers. I'm trying to struggle through this and I will pass it on to um, our new Lorraine. Are you there? Lorraine? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. You, Lorraine? yeah. Thanks, Victoria. Sorry to hear that. Sounds like a quite a challenge. Um, I am, um, yeah, my, uh, nothing, uh, nothing fancy going on. Uh, nothing, just pretty even right now, but looking for a new place to live. It's part of the, uh, uh, part of my transition into my new life. Um, so, you know, that's been kind of interesting because I realize I'm a lot fussier than I thought I was. So this is going to be a long search. Um, and it will mean sort of saying goodbye to my house where I had more of the family memories, but it's really time to move on from all of that. So, um, yeah, and got together with friends this weekend, which was really fun. But that's really, that's kind of it for me. And pass it on to Hanel. Thank you, Lorraine. <clears throat> and Victoria, I just want to say something odd started happening with me as well. Um, I had a spasm in my butt, left bum. And then it went onto my left knee, down mm. my left, down my left side of my thigh on the outside and then into my knee. And so that I can't sleep at night. It's really tough to sleep because during the day, it's fine when I move around, when I sit and when I walk and stand. And But at night, after two hours, it gets stiff. So then I wake up. So I'm also battling with lack of sleep at the moment. But I'm, I, I feel like I've got, I've, I'm getting out of it. But I want to, what I want to share was yesterday, I spent uh, with my daughter's dog in a woods, in a, in a forest, um, about three hours. Mm. And it was, it was, Victoria was so, so amazing because I felt so different afterwards. And we just sat on a bench and there was a small lake and all these amazing trees. It was just really a sense of serenity. And it was like my muscles relaxed, but it is, my physio said it's also interesting because it's the left side of my body, my feminine side. So she also felt there was something going on because of her other patients um, with women, some stuff on our left side of our body specifically, which is our feminine side. So just want to mention that. I personally am a, I'm, I'm good otherwise. Um, I'm just still um, in a sort of a haze. I shared an amazing strategy session with a client last week. And it turned out that it was actually guiding them to their company's higher purpose. And it wasn't, it wasn't deliberate, it just happened. And they were all just, they were wild because they didn't expect anything like that. And to discover the higher purpose of their business was, which they already have for 25 years, was quite something. And I'm still in it because to me, it was also a surprise that it went that route naturally. Um, so I'm between the lack of sleep and that euphoria of something beautiful, busy, birthing and emerging. <laughs> Thank mm. you. I'm completely now passed to Heidi. Now, I'm in South Africa in Cape Town. Yeah. So we have a, a, a half of us are in California and the rest is somewhere else in the world. I'm in Italy, uh, Monia in uh, Austria and you in South Africa. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. me, I'm glad that the days begin to be a, a little longer. We had wonderful weather up to the other day. Oh, yesterday, actually. It was nice and sunny and warm. And today it's like, uh, 
I have fire in the stove and um, more inside. I've almost finished my uh, olive pruning. And today we started, I have guests now, uh, Erika with her husband is, came yesterday and we did the first fires for to burn all these huge amounts of branches, which I have cut away. So it's quite, it's quite fun. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they are here for a while now and I'm positive for the future that something good might happen. And what I heard from you that um, more or less everybody is in a moment of transition or change or, or a new life, the old life and the new life, which is about to start or maybe start and so on. We might talk about this. Otherwise, um, give me some indication. What would you like to talk about today? I put it already in the chat. Uh, last time we ended how we will feel uh, if we notice the sunstorm and what effect it has on us and how we utilize it. Uh, I don't know whether this topic is still interesting. I didn't feel anything at all. So it's just... Yeah, that's. Yeah. Did anybody else feel the sunstorm, the eruption of the sun? Because um, uh, on Friday, uh, one of the women at the, uh, as we have, meeting at the well, or Frauen am Brunnen, women at the well, somebody claimed that. Um, they have their roots in the sky and that they influence the sun, which is uh, as somehow forgetting Copernicus that we don't have a, uh, that we have a solar center system. And I'm wondering how such ideas can erupt. But anyway, uh, I didn't notice anything of the sunstorm because maybe I'm very insensitive. But uh, I'm glad that, and uh, actually I do have more energy now and so does my husband because he uh, walked up three stores uh, last weekend for the birthday of our daughter and our grandchild. We had a party and everybody was so delighted that he finally made this move. So maybe we, we even have more strength now and more energy. And I was wondering, uh, does anybody else notice a change in energy? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well. Annelie, you said right away that you uh, felt something. Oh, yeah. This was something sensory and sensitive somatically. I, uh, I felt a huge expansion. It's like my awareness is just expanded. And because we have summer here, it was really hot on that day. I think it affected us in the southern hemisphere a lot more than in the no northern hemisphere, mm -hmm. perhaps, because you could feel the you could feel the bombardment. It was continuous during the day and even at night. Um, and as I'm cheering it with you, I feel it again in myself. So I literally did feel the expansion in my awareness. Um, some people get tired during such storms, but I didn't experience tiredness because of it. It was just. Yeah, it's a, it's a spacious, spa expansive sense. And when I walked on the beach the following day, it was as if the horizon shifted because I can see the horizon about nine kilometers when I walk up the beach in the distance. And it was like, I could sense it. It seems further. I don't know how else to explain. Mm. Well, it's interesting you bring that up, uh, Monia, because I have recently felt a surge of energy and a mental clarity and better sleep. And I've been puzzling about it and wondering, well, what brought this on? I don't know. More daylight? I, I really, I don't know what it is, but it was a relief. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, there's there's the question of how long it will last, but um, yeah, I did feel it. It's interesting that you know you both noticed that as well. 
Does anyone have an explanation? Yeah, there is this uh, YouTube uh, person, a physicist, I think he is, mm -hmm. Stefan Burns, and he's talking about this and gives the detail, detailed uh, technical scientific explanations, but he's also bringing it into spiritual um, in the, the spiritual realm. And mm -hmm. there's another person who then translates it more or less into German, and he explicitly says, this is information we are fed it uh, mm. now for, for the mm. expansion of consciousness, more or less. Mm. What exactly mm. the information is, we don't know, but it, mm -hmm. it's uh, sort of, you. it's a possibility to feel it. And when you are, let's say, in higher vibrations already, sort of you will feel it much more positive. And when you are in depressive state or something, you might feel it more uh, as a negative. So it's not mm -hmm. that you can see, uh, they say, that you can say that it is this result, you know, it's it's individually uh, different how you how you uh, your body and your mind handles it, let's say. So the mm -hmm. result might be different. It's some of these things which you need, at least I uh, don't know. I It's a question of belief and of feeling and thinking, oh, maybe that's this, but we cannot really 100% know it. The same thing mm -hmm. with... You know, Monia, why do you think we cannot influence the cosmos? We are so connected with everyone, uh, everything. Sh certainly, you you personally cannot say to the sun, please erupt. That's no, but but all together we are a system. So we have also reflection to 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 what is outside. Maybe not as towards us, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say, but. Uh, there I is would I would really hesitate to influence the sun. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's all right if I influence my surroundings and my my husband and uh, give positive positive vibes to him, but I would never claim that I influence. Yeah, well, of course we are in resonance to each other, exactly. but uh, so. Uh, but I was wondering about Victoria and her body symptoms. Uh, do you have an ex an explanation why this could be happening now? Um, well, well, I mean, now we've now we've jumped from the cosmos to the the, <laughs> micro, the microcosmos. Um, the, the only, I mean, I still have a long list of appointments ahead of me with all kinds of specialists. I'm, my my insurance company here is the university. Um, well, for, for Christina Lorraine, it's UCSD because you probably, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the local, it's the major sort of medical megalith. <laughs> so that was mm -hmm. nice, medical med megalith in this part of the world and, and actually quite a famous medical school. So I feel like theoretically I should be in with the cutting edge uh, people. I've got, they do everything with specialists. I've the next until June, no, till December, I have a lineup of fabulous appointments with all kinds of specialists. Um, the, yeah, the, what seem what I think personally, and what, as I said, what my therapist, who's, who's one of the few women on, well, I've got a few other women, but they, I haven't seen them yet. Um, she she's convinced that it's you know she says she's encountering this over and over and over again with her own patients I mean she's a therapist so she's not a doctor a medical doctor but she has decades of experience and she's really intuitive and smart and she says definitively she thinks it's because I'm a woman and I'm at menopausal age well I'm, I've gone through menopause theoretically um <laughs> as far as mm. I know um so, so she thinks it really has to do with hormonal um, imbalances, and but the problem is that um, it's you know my my the two people leading my team are both men, and they just keep saying, well, you know, it'll all work itself out in the end, and um, you know they say this obvious stuff, you know, I need to lose weight, which I know I do, but but the weight seems to be water. 
mm-hmm. and not, you know, so, so anyway, I don't want to go into whole mess of pneumonia, but thanks for your concern. But, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that it's, um, although, you know, it's like I have arthritis, which is really scary because I, you know, because of my profession, which is on the rocks anyway, at the moment, but it's just, um, you know, if it were just one thing, I could just think, okay, well, I'll just deal with it. And we learn from suffering and I could go a whole, like the whole Buddhist route and, um, Mm -hmm. or Christian for that matter. (laughs) My strength is made perfect in weakness. Um, So I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of just, just going day by day right now, just in the hope that I can, um, just continue. But, but my big epiphany this morning was that I I keep thinking I'm going to die imminently, like any minute now, I was going to write you a note in the chat, Monia, and say, um, I hope to meet you in person before I die. (laughs) And then I thought, who's to say I'm going to die imminently? Like, um, because I, I, I was thinking about the violin and, and I just remembered last week or the week before we celebrated the 88th birthday of a colleague of mine, a dear friend who's, um, who's 88 and he's still composing and he's playing the clarinet and he's out and about going to the opera. And I thought maybe I won't die imminently. Maybe there's a chance I can get this um christine yes i did have covid and that's the other but but as you know that's like the big unknown because um i ever since i had covid i have had every single solitary symptom on the list of the long-term covid so that could be it but but it's it's like fibromyalgia when i said fibromyalgia to my doctor because i looked it up because i know someone who has it he just threw a fit because he said doesn't exist it's in the mind it's all in your oh. mind so oh. i'm in this where it's all in my mind um so i'm taking refuge in the fact that my late husband um who was austrian was a big advocate of rudolf steiner and he said um steiner always said that the the physical afflictions come from the mind and the mental afflictions come from the body i.e everything's interconnected <laughs> i um mm-hmm. So I'm thinking to myself, well, fair enough. Maybe, maybe I'm insane because I'm in a lot of pain and my body is falling apart. Or maybe, it, but I don't think it came from my mind because I this just, you know, it's just like I didn't get COVID, mental COVID, or I mean, I didn't like, you know, well, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Victoria, and the other question: Did you have the shots, the COVID shots? Oh, well, now we're gonna go down that rabbit hole. This mm-hmm. is an Alice in Wonderland thing. I did. Yeah, I did. I had, I had three of them. And then when the new ones came out, I refused to go because I have some friends, I have some friends all over the world, actually, including some of you here, um, who never, never had the shots and, and are the way they were before the pandemic. I mean, nothing happened. So, um, because this is what I'm hearing you say, that's part of what I heard that are side effects of these things, possible side effects. So maybe you could go this route and try to find something to to remediate, to to purify um, the body of of these things. Normal doctors would refuse because it's still the dogma that it's not possible, but there are enough um, medical professionals who occupy themselves with, um, with the cure of side effects. So maybe we could also talk later uh, about this. But this is also just an individual uh, scenario because I've had four shots. We haven't had COVID yet and we never felt anything at all. Mm. It's but, totally individual. But our I, my blood type is uh, zero, o, zero negative. Mm. And my husband is zero positive, and I, so it's it's very individual. But I was wondering, Victoria, did you tell your therapist about your spiritual needs? Your gorging on spiritual—that's uh, uh, the impression I had. I'm sorry, but you, you you're were so, so you're so funny to... today. No, no, I'm I'm just having the time of my life. I I don't think I've laughed this much in months. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Starting with uh, the cracking of the egg. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just wondering, did you tell her about your need, your 
urgent need to accumulate spiritual knowledge. Well, she know. Yeah, she knows about it. She well, she she's in with the re the rest of my team. All my team. Apropos of the forest, Hanali. Um, yeah, I I've I've since I've seen all of you. I've had a switch. Um, in I was up in in visiting Beatrice. Uh, this is my daughter Lorraine. Um, because you came in, um, who comes here occasionally. Uh, anyway, I went to visit her in Portland, and I couldn't get enough of the trees and the waterfall. That we went to see a <laughs> waterfall hiked up the mountain, and um, and yeah, I'm I'm my my gorging now. Well, it's not gorging yet. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> my gor my plan for gorging is nature. Um, it's, it's all of a sudden something snapped in me. Um, and I realized that what I really need is not more zoom courses in Buddhism or anything else for that matter, but I need trees and birds and flowers and ocean. And, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. um, so I'm working on it. I, in fact, I, I did a little bit of like pre sort of test gorging yesterday because I, sp we spent two hours at the ocean in the morning and then I did come back for a Zoom call, which I hated. And then we, I, it was so horrible, the Zoom call that we immediately went out again and spent um, three hours at the zoo until it was dark and we were thrown out by the police actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so long. So um, yeah, so I think I'm, I, in that sense, I think I'm on track. Um, I hope. What do you think, Monia? You're the. I'm putting it, my question in the chat just to you. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, can I just, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is there, I I don't know what happened on this. Um, and as you know, I live on Zoom. I cannot do anything with the chat today. And when I tried, uh, something kept coming up saying that, did I want an AI companion, which I've never seen on my, on my, um, Zoom before. Does anyone else have that problem right now? No, what that? Okay, I, 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 I didn't. Opt, yeah, have okay. any artificial intelligence? But maybe I, I'm only saying that, Monia, because I I can't. I'm I keep clicking on the chat and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So can you can you um maybe do, email do you have it down? There's chat chat chat. Where is the chat? Mayor, here it is. Chat. You. Uh, on the right side no no i've i've got it i've got it but it doesn't it's not it's not uh mm -hmm. working i can't write anything okay so if you could send me an email if it's I, private otherwise I just forgot, i forgot the question <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry right. oh you're scared to okay it. go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead we were wondering if you are coming so, so we are already into a lot of topics about physical ailments, influence of the universe and the sun flares on our bodies, our psyches, and, and so on. So you just jump in somehow, we will see. And now it was a sort of a dialogue between Victoria and Monia. So it was real, was, real dialogue. Mm -hmm. I everybody's heard about forest bathing, yes. Mm -hmm. So I was I was wondering, Victoria, if you just can take what you did in Portland and apply it here. We don't have a lot of forests, but any place uh, with trees and nature will actually do because it's a sensory thing. It doesn't have to be with the trees, but so maybe just seeking that out will also help you. Um, can you? Define it according to the way you understand it, because the internet is like rife with all kinds of bathing, and I'm not sure about what's what and what's legit and how it all works. Can you say what you're thinking of? Um, the Japanese have a tradition called forest bathing. It's got a Japanese name, but um, it's basically going out in nature and relaxing, and it it kind of stimulates you with a sensory <clears throat> with sensory input. At a at a deep level, both spiritually, physically, mentally. Yeah, and I understood also that you can uh, hug trees if you want, but it's not necessary. But be in contact with nature, which means what I always tell me—not always, but often when I walk in in the park, 
don't think of other things but be in the present and mm -hmm. and, and see what you see and feel what you feel and smile what you smell that sort of uh, challenge to not going back to business as usual and just walk through whatever it is if it's nature uh, or something else so i think this forest bathing is working only when you succeed to 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 be there and and you know get right i invite you to do a little check in and see what what comes from you yeah I, it's, I thought, is it too late to come in? But then I wanted to see you and just reconnect. And I have a little challenge because I have a call, which is not only mine, that get, uh, takes till 18.30 um, every Monday. So... So I'm, I hardly <laughs> want to ask you to, to postpone it by half an hour, but um, yeah, that would be great. Otherwise, I just have to come later. Um, yeah, actually, on my way to Hamburg to see my daughter, who is. 29th, 28th week, and uh, our partner can't be there. He, he has a business trip, so so just to be there for her and the, the little one who's already there. Yeah, and um, I had a wonderful, wonderful weekend last weekend, that um, a training weekend with Reflow with eight participants and it was really amazing. And what I realized was one thing that like giving our energy out to the world, what we all like to do. And there is, this is not received, um, that can drain and and we did something to receive back not having been received and that was so deep and so wonderful so and yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm on that wave of bringing back the energy to have it in my container that it can overflow again That was really remarkable. Yeah, great to see you all. And uh, I don't want, yeah, I interrupted the flow, so sorry. I came in when you had really much fun. <laughs> so I want to, you to go back to that. <laughs> Us all. Uh, Victoria, so I wrote you an email about my question. Okay. So... And That's I wanted point. to say, Gertrude, you are the master in WeFlow. So now we cre recreate the WeFlow, which was sort of a little bit interrupted. We will see how we go on. Another thing what I uh, picked up in, in the check-ins, uh, Victoria, you said uh, I'm good in esoteric or something. Shall we talk a little bit about what esoteric means? And what what it is about or because I often hear many people think it is negative and uh, rejected and things like that. Uh, Rudolf Steiner would be esoteric too, you know. So uh, what, why do we reject it already on the word? Um, I meant it positively. I, I didn't mean I I was I was saying that as a tribute to your yeah yeah no I oh, don't okay I just want to make sure you negative but many I didn't many, mean it negatively at all or I wouldn't be here <laughs> uh, many people see it as negative and de devalue it no but that's it's it's for me it's very strange because esoteric and esoteric no it's only the inside and the and, and the outside and it is a religion's tradition the the es esoteric um 
parts of religion and esoteric parts. And we in Christianity, at least in the last, let's say, 1,500 years, we are so trained into the ex exoteric, I think uh, you say in mm -hmm. English. No? Uh, in the in the outside religion and not so much in the inside religion as, as far as I can um, see that and that we already started about 50 60 years ago to with meditation practice to to go into the into the inside so I'm wondering if we can continue maybe in in this direction, I'm really curious about Haneli because she is doing a lot of esoteric things and they seem to work. I remember when she was hurt. I remember it was two years or something when she was burned and in very short time she was able to heal herself. So that's that for me is esoteric knowledge and, and abilities to be able to do this. I would I would refer to it rather as metaphysics because it's it's met it means it's our inner world and our inner experiences whereas like you said the exoteric and esoteric inner and outer I think it's conditioning that or I believe it's conditioning that just created fear because we can't see it when we can see things, the logic, it's like the left side of the brain can name it and classify it. But with the right side of our brain, you can't, you can't really classify the, the abilities that's hiding in our right side of our brains, for example. And that's just an example from a biological point of view. But if I go back to what happened to me when I burned, it's, and I think it's, you, what you were sharing earlier about forest bathing, Christine and and Victoria about you feeling part of all that is you are you're not separate from it. So I think the 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 left side of the brain wants to separate to to be able to classify, name things, and label it, but it can be analyzed and the like. Whereas in that space of consciousness. You just feel connected to everything that is life itself. That's why nature is such a healing space to go into if we feel off. Because we just need to reconnect with life itself. I think what happened with me was literally just reconnecting with life intuitively in many different ways. That all together created a, a optimal healing space for me to heal very fast. And I did do very alternative things as well. I did go to the hospital, as you know, every second day to get my wounds treated and the likes but it was also my own sense of self my own attitude that contributed to me healing quickly because I was in a space of joy because I was supported I felt supported by the universe in some ways that's why I said the metaphysical part I think people are just afraid of it that's why it's being stigmatized and it also has to do with the suppression of the feminine um the patriarchal system it's all connected to that 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 fear has been created of the unknown because we can't see it but we can feel and sense it we are very well aware of it that it's there it's like when we earlier spoke about the sun storm the, that happened um, you can feel it if if you're sensory so if you and some people is not necessarily sensory could feel it as well they could feel the impact they could feel the pressure because it's a lot more than usual because of the atmosphere's pressure onto us. And we are influenced by everything in the universe. And like when we influence it backward, you know, it's not, it's not a one-way street. But I do feel in my work specifically a shift. It's how we introduce people into that space of the lim a liminal space, a world between worlds. And I usually start with the mind, just emptying the mind and putting the mind at ease. And then to support the body. So you first support the mind, then you support the body. And then you can start and play in this other realm because then the body and the mind is feeling safe. And it really works. And it works in a business environment. It works in a personal environment. In corporate training, it works. You can use it in anything. And it's very simplistic to just to lead people gently into that so that they can feel safe. And then they open up. And once they feel it in their bodies, something happens in their minds as well. And then they make that switch to the 
to the more creative side of their brains, their consciousness and lights. But I, I do see the big shift in the world that people are opening up to that on many levels. And they're not so afraid anymore to explore and experiment. I think what, what I've seen from my spiritual gorging, as Monia puts it, is, <laughs> is that um, it's the, I, actually, I was just having a conversation with somebody about that this earlier this morning, um, that I've, I've noticed that what one thing that made it easy for me to divest myself of a lot of my, um, my, my, the objects of my gorging is that the um, Buddhism in the United States at the moment, I feel is is on a steady path towards a kind of, um, ironically, a kind of materialism um, because it's secular Buddhism and it's, 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 mm -hmm. it's been appropriated from the East and, um, and there's even a term, it's called the, the people who are teaching it, who are most of my illustrious teachers for the last four years, um, and this is their own epithet, so I'm not being racist at all. Um, they call themselves Jew booze because, because the top teachers in the United States, in the, well, this isn't a particular tradition, the, the Theravadan tradition, which is the, um, the Thai forest tradition, but they they are um all of those people and there, there's a there's a whole sort of coterie of them because they all the 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 early ones all went to asia together and, and brought buddhism back to the united states this is back in the um early 70s so it's a long it's 50 years ago now um they were all raised very um hardcore secular atheists so and yet they have in their heritage like one of my favorite teachers her grandfather was a rabbi, but but she her her parents then distanced themselves completely, and um, moved away and from from any kind of spiritual affinity. So what they've done is, and that's that's the big they've um, they maybe not given the credit, but they have given the impetus for the big mindfulness movement, which of course is global, and um, and one of their someone connected with them, John Kabat-Zinn, um, who does not teach Buddhism, but he's never, nevertheless part of that cohort in terms of his own practice and his own friendships and relationships. And he's the one that was the, the trailblazer to bring it into the, um, the you know, secular medical profession and started, he was at Harvard Medical School and then he still um, supervises courses at Massachusetts uh, General Hospital, which is what's all the same sort of ecosystem in Boston, but it's that's gone global, and and he's a huge. I mean, he's like the superstar of bringing mindfulness, um, mindfulness based stress reduction into hospitals and prisons and schools and you name it. So, but what I've noticed, and this is why I'm moving away from it, is I feel like I've learned you know, through the gorging, I've learned all that I can from that particular sector because, um, because it's, it's in a, well, and with the help of my therapy too. I mean, it's interesting. So I, I'm sorry, I'm very incoherent today, but essentially what I'm saying is I think there's, interestingly enough, there's a kind of polarity already between the exoteric and the esoteric that's going on right now, even as we speak. Um, ironically, having come originally out of a spiritual tradition. In other words, so, and Christianity, um, the, the, whatever Pope it was, I wasn't Catholic, so I didn't, don't remember who it was, but in the, in the sixties, um, whatever Pope it was, um, commissioned a, a priest here in, in the United States, a Trappist, um, Thomas Keating, to with a bunch of there are about four priests who were who were personally given the task of reactivating the esoteric tradition in Christianity, which had gone underground already during the Inquisition. Because what's as Hanali was saying, if you're if you're attuning the inside of your mind to your body and you're in this interior space, 
And that's where esoteric, I think, as a term is, is I mean, metaphysics, yes, it also. But, but the esoteric, I think, is very palpably the right term. Oh, yeah, John, Pope John the, Paul the 23rd, right. Yeah, he was the, the one that actually was kind of a visionary. Um, oh, I shouldn't, sorry, just forget that I said. Um, the, because it's that interiority, because it's frightening, and, and that's true politically, that's true right across the board. So I think it's interesting um, that, because no one can control what's inside of us unless they brainwash us. And so we even see that politically, the, the totalitarian regimes, that's their first target. They don't worry about training these 13-year-old kids to, to carry guns. What they really start with is the ideology, is brainwashing them, getting them on the program of what their values are. And unfortunately, because we're in a, a you know, especially in the United States, I don't know about the rest of the world, but the United States is like becoming increasingly illiterate, like by the minute. People are reading less and less. They're almost incapable of reading, and um, which is a very dangerous place to be because all they get is via social media and media in general. So it's the Americans are in the perfect position now to be completely taken over. And um, all right, I'm going to be quiet now because I'm still using popping. <laughs> but but that's my take on it. That um, and that's why for me personally, I've. I've decided that the um, it's important to go back to the, to the source for all of these things, because that's where then I can make choices for myself, and I can tap into what I consider the the, the spiritual core. It's not that these I'm not I'm not putting down by the way these these secular uh, they're, they're fabulous and they've done a great work the last half a century. It's just that my own journey with them. I feel I've done what 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 I could learn. I've learned what I can learn now. I'm going deeper. Okay, I'll be quiet. I'm sorry. Goodbye. I mean, not goodbye, but. So um, <clears throat> I hear what you're saying that um, there people teach Buddhism, but the, the real essence is missing because they are sort of using the techniques from esotericism uh, for for worldly purposes more or less that we go psychologically calm or something like this what do you uh psychologists say about that i i think that's true uh you hear a lot about mindfulness um in uh i think i mentioned i i work a lot or have worked a lot with people who've had a significant trauma and using mindfulness uh, in that realm is thought of as a technique. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, you know, the spiritual part is completely individual, but um, it, it's really been adopted. And it's a very useful technique because it really helps with self-regulation. It really helps calm the nervous system. Um, when you, when you, can really grasp what that whole mindfulness thing means. I mean, you have to sit with whatever comes up. I use it myself um, as a way of, of going to your own interior, not as a spiritual kind of uh, experience or mechanism. And unless your notion of spirituality includes that sort of old time Gnostic pagan idea that, um, you know, we connect in spirit through nature. So, you know, I, I find it extremely useful to help people connect with their own nature, with their own bodies. And that's a tricky thing. Our whole culture is really anti-bodied. Um, you know, I, we work out, we do a lot of physical kinds of things, but I don't think there's an appreciation for the fact that mind is body and body is mind, that they're not really separate. Um, so yeah, I would agree with you, Victoria. I, I see that. Um, and as you say, it's very useful 
but it is not the spiritual quest necessarily that's that's being encouraged here and not to put a value judgment on that you know i don't mean to say one is good one is bad as you're saying yourself and i use mindfulness it's almost a misnomer because in a way you want people to stop being attached to mm -hmm. their thoughts right so you mm -hmm. your mind right. is something you don't want to have online all the time so i find it most helpful to get people more to have an experience and be aware but not thinking right we don't want them thinking all the time because it tends to take them down the wrong track so um it's kind of an oxymoron for me to have call it mindfulness when I want people to have an experience and to be in touch and not to be up in their head. Yeah. Well, my favorite Buddhist teacher um, at the moment, who's just off the charts, fabulous, um, who, who incidentally it was a computer programmer. So, so we don't talk about spiritual things um, overtly because um, <laughs> he's a, a diehard atheist. Um, but what's interesting is that he, apropos of linguistics, he, the other, I was, we did a three, three hour seminar on Saturday. Um, and, and we always get caught in these nuances because he'll say something and then it'll trigger something in me that I feel like what he's saying isn't, well, anyway, never mind. But, but he said the, on Saturday, and it's, it's so appropriate for this too. Um, I said, what's the best English word you can think of for this Pali word. Pali is the word that the the Buddha actually taught in, um, and um, and then later was translated into Sanskrit. Um, and he used the he used the same Pali word. In other words, he said he said the whole pitfall is that these these words are so. Um, of course, that's true in every language. But he said particularly when you're diving into these um, spiritual texts the nuances and 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 so we get caught so mindfulness is a perfect example that by using the by translating into english so a lot of buddhist teachers now are using um the term mindful awareness because they want to bring the awareness part of it in and you know lessen the sense of because because there's a whole other path in the buddhist practice which is based on concentration which is based on mind training and mindfulness as we are using it in the West is is an attempt, as you said, Christine, to if anything, to divest oneself of the um intellectualizing, the conceptualizing, staying up here and not including the body, like Connolly was saying, not having that holistic um, you know, bringing bringing it into the body as an experience. Um, so so that's yeah, the language thing is is key, absolutely. Gertraud, do you have any remarks to this topic? Not so much. It's it's more that yeah. I'm not so much into concepts. <laughs> And um, so I'm 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 more resonant with the body or bring people back to 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 the experience and body like like Christine said it. So I feel when I when I listen, I feel my my head kind of wondering <laughs> and um yeah so i don't have to to say much about that okay so we did a whole journey today starting with the sun flares <laughs> coming to spirituality mindfulness atheism and whatever so we are almost at the end and i invite you to reflect on it and afterwards when we stop the recording we talk about the the timing i have an assistant as you have seen here so 
in the body awareness. They have a body awareness, these things. <laughs> Who wants to start? No, I, 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 I have one thought that I might put in. Um, what I understood about integral theory or so, it's like that you can think two levels further than you are. So you can grasp the concept, but it doesn't mean that you are there and and fully transformed and included it. And uh, at at one point we were saying, so it's like, for example, Agile was born out of the green meme and was tortured in orange. <laughs> so so people did. Uh, they applied it as, as a completely as a tool, not as as something that could support um, the whole team or so. And and I got that in a in a company where they like forced the people to be agile, uh, and and also like appreciative inquiry. Um, I saw somebody who was really like applying it in a in a very um, strict and and orange form. So so to use things that are meant in a completely different way and then <laughs> apply them in your own habitat, so to say, um, that that's often done. So, yeah, that's what I got from Victoria. That like you said they they take something and then they uh, put it in a completely different realm. Lauren, I hope it was not what I said <laughs> that made her leave. Uh, so we went off. So uh, that we didn't have her do the checkout. So we continue. I just wanted to say I'm going to have to leave soon too for uh, get to work. I'm okay with changing the time a bit to accommodate Gertrude, maybe like 15 minutes. If anybody else can do that, I could do like 15 minutes, but I typically have to get to work after this meeting. So I can't, uh, I can't wait too long. Yeah, like I, I, I have an I could do half an hour. Let us yeah, talk about I, this either later or in email okay. because this is still okay. on recording. So oh, yeah. just let us finish the 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 session by the checkout, and then you the are other thing, I I did put in the um chat if people are interested in the conference coming up in May, it's going to be great. Um, so take a look at that. We are icon .org. We are icon.org and icon stands for Integral Conference of North America. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was a good session today. Lots of different ideas floating around. And I like the combination of going from spiritual uh, to the somatic, uh, to the psychological, um, to nature. You know, we I think we covered the universe, guys. <laughs> I not think to mention the cosmos the with the with the sunstrokes. Right. I mean, not right. sunstrokes. Universe. Yeah, that was good. And this is in yeah. person, isn't it? It's you can buy an online ticket. Oh, okay. No, they're selling online tickets now. Of course, you know, time wise, I don't know how that works for, out for everybody, but they're selling both. Yeah, okay. and I'm done. Thank you, everyone. I also have to leave. Um, lovely to be with you and to have this wonderful exploration together. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Okay. Some other check out. Monia, Victoria. Well, I'll check out by saying that um, a few days ago, well, yesterday, actually, with all the nature and the ocean and everything, I was thinking, I'm never going to open my computer again as long as I live on the earth and it's over and I'm sick of media and all of it. And I'm in, I'm only using my iPhone for to take photographs of nature. And then I realized just now profoundly how much I love you 
-hmm. and how I've never met any of you, even Christine, which is crazy. We have never met in the flesh. And so in some weird way, um, speaking of like, you know, the outside and the inside, <laughs> I feel like we are we are bound together by heart and soul, even though we've never actually physically, at least for me, I've never physically been able to hug any of you, but I really love you all. So I, that's my checkout. Thank you. Well, I met your daughter, Beatrice, at least <laughs> in Vienna and had a very nice time together. So yeah. Maybe we are meeting in our essence here. Maybe this is different, the way we are meeting. Yeah, that's my checkup. Thank you all. It was a very, very interesting evening. If I could purr like she does, I would purr. <laughs> <laughs> I'd check out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>